Hey guys, welcome back to Beer Bird and Bullshit. What's up? Uh, we have another uh, pint night in Frisco's and Crofton tonight. Uh, this is a uh, it's a Oscar Blues and Cigar City uh, kind of duo. Uh, so we've got a, a nice little set of flights for us to try tonight, and we also have a guest of honor. So, who are you? Who you uh, my name is Jeff Beckelman. I am the uh, territory sales rep for Maryland and Delaware for Canarchy. So, okay. being the um, uh, umbrella company over top of Cigar City, Oscar Blues, and a number of different uh, brands as well. Very cool. How long have you been doing that? Uh, I've been with the company for six years. Okay, very good. Have you been a sales rep the whole time, or did you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So you may know a thing or two about these beers. I might. Yeah. Okay. But I, you know, That's it's good. <laughs> it's, it's an ever um, it's an ever changing uh, lineup, I guess you could say. You know, trying to keep up with um, uh, innovation and whatnot. But mm -hmm. you know, we. We have um, stuck to our guns as far as, you know, the pushing the core. Sure. Um, and um, keeping a strong core uh, that everybody's going to really enjoy. You know, I, this kind of triggers a question to me. I, I, we've had other, you know, reps here before, but I think all the reps have always been for for smaller local type breweries, right? So they're, you know, the rep for First State or the rep for Dewey or whatever. Yeah. Where you're a rep for multiples here, yeah, is 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 it kind of weird to keep up with them, or because they're under the same umbrella, do they get maybe, for a lack of terms, parental direction that says you guys should kind of follow these kind of like paths or, or ways of doing things, so everyone's kind of got the same kind of feel about them. I think if what I'm understanding that you're asking is. Um, that was confusing. Being, I'm sorry. Being, being a na like being a national brand um, or brands uh, is a little bit different, especially like trying to keep up with local brands because there's a lot of focus on uh, local brands. Um, we have an advantage, um, especially with being in the Canarchy network, with um, having locked arms together and kind of sharing resources so that we can produce products um, at a lower cost. Um, you know, tops and and whatnot. Sure. So. Um, we've also uh, opened up a number of breweries nationwide to help localize ourselves um, in different regions. So, you know, we're close. Our closest brewery would be North Carolina. But, yeah, still a challenge with, you know, I, we still end up getting overlooked to a certain degree when it comes to local, you know. And even when there's, you know, it can, it can be a little much sometimes. There's a local brewery right around the corner from an establishment. Right. And they're, they're putting nothing but that local brewery on. It's like, you can spit on that place from here. I mean, I get it. I get it. But, um, but, you know, so uh, good part being is we've got a really solid product and the price is right. So we've been around for long enough that, um, you know, like I said, the liquid is solid and, and we can keep things at an affordable price. And, and being national now is, you know, kind of means we're in those categories with, you know, your Lagunitas of the world, your um, Sierra Nevada of the world. So, right. you know, kind of um, we're shifting more into, like I said, um, paying attention to that core lineup and trying to put down permanent lines, I think, as much as we can. Okay. So we trying to keep that local feel as much as you can, yeah, too. Yeah. Pretty cool. We definitely dig that. Yeah. Um, so we have a, a nice lineup of beers here. Uh, with, so with this, this pint night, there are six beers that uh, you guys have brought in. Um, six. six. I know. Six. It's crazy. Yeah. Bernie can count that high. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> you're normally just ones and zeros. It's fine. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I didn't realize we were tasting through them all. I shouldn't have ordered a beer. Yeah, but no, it's we, okay. Yes, you know? I, when, in, so. when in Rome. Um, so the first one we have in line is a. Uh, it's this one here, which is the American Lager, correct? Yeah. So this is Dale's Light Lager. Um, and this one is. Uh, so we have it, Oscar Blues and Cigar City, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. So, great place to start. This is um, our light lager. Uh, we launched this. Um, say about two years ago now. Okay. Um, this was this beer was originally brewed for the guys at the brewery because this is the type of beer that they want to drink when they get off of work. Something something light, something, something super just, light. Yep. Yeah, something that they can they can crush. It's four point two percent. So very easy drinking. Uh huh. So yeah. then basically, this is a beer. We're getting a taste of beer that the beer makers actually want. made. Yeah, because that's what they want. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a cool thing to and, know. And you guys probably know that like. A beer like this, you know, is is more difficult to execute because it's, you know, you have beer competition can, to work off we, of. But you can't you can't hide impurities. Yeah, um, right. it's, Because it's, it's not overloaded with hops or anything like that. It, so, it's I don't want to say it's such a light beer, but it's such an uh, it's such a 
simplistic beer is mm -hmm. the way to put it. You can't yeah. hide anything in mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. So it has to be, yeah. Oh, cheers. 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 Yeah. So this, this beer, fun fact, uh -oh. it actually has the same specs as a Michelob Ultra. Okay. Now, I should have said this before. We could have brought a Michelob Ultra out here and, and kind of them <laughs> side by side. Um, but yeah, and, and it just amazes me because I, I actually drink a lot of this beer at home um, because it is it tastes so good and it's just so easy yeah, that's very, on me. You know, it's like refreshing. Mm -hmm. just, I, football, I just sit there and crush these all day long. Now, taste wise, how does this compare to the Michelob Ultra? That, well, that's what I was that's what I was saying. Like I was, we could have brought one out. Literally, do like a blind taste. I, I, I right, done a side by side with them. Yeah. Right, yeah, cool. That would have been fun. That yeah, would yeah. have been. Um, it, it is cool to find, you know, companies. And, and we mentioned this. We've yeah. had two or three so far. They're doing the lagers. You don't have to buy that big box creature. Yeah. And this is where it gets really a little. You're not the first larger brew we've had. It, it's the same thing again. Because our big thing is be local, drink local. But. The thing is, once upon a time, you guys were local. Mm -hmm. You guys were just so good that you branched beyond the neighborhood, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Um, so it's still there. It's still good, uh, especially if you're one of those people that were close by where it started, right? Right. 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 <laughs> right. Then you're still very... Longmont, Colorado, Tampa, Florida. You're from Florida, right? I Somehow or another, you found that out. How yeah, is that? Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I may have been to Florida once or twice. <laughs> And when I said, uh, by the way, when I was talking about specs as far as this beer goes in Michelob Ultra, mm -hmm. I just meant 95 calories, 2.5 carbs. And I think Michelob Ultra is actually 2.6 carbs. Well, who's counting? Uh, so th that's what I meant. But, like, but <laughs> ingredient-wise, it's, it's you know totally different. I, I knew what you meant, but you yeah. know what? That was yeah. probably really smart to put that out there yeah. just in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't want people to think that we were, it was that exactly it's a Michelob cool. Ultra. Yeah, it's yeah. not. No, it's, it's definitely just, not. It's, it's, it's a light beer is what it is right yep. right exactly mm -hmm. yeah super easy drinking definitely refreshing go outside all day just pop this one mm -hmm. no it issues. Is. that's exactly what it is it's, it's a it's a super easy mm -hmm. yeah. i like yeah. it oh my god there's silence actually there's no silence you're going to hear the restaurant, right? Because we're right off the edge of it. So you always pick that up with background noise no matter what you do. Well, I was asking how you guys, because I didn't see any of the mics when I came down here, when yeah. I sat down at first. And I was asking how you guys remedy that. Yeah. But yeah we, so this but is cool. We do. Little, I like little, this little baby boys down here. Yeah. That's really neat. <laughs> yeah. The first time we got them, we actually tried to use them as regular lapel lapels. Ones, yeah. Just, mm. was, which kind of worked for us a little better for us, but it does nothing for you. So we threw them out here and we found they work just fine like that yep. so okay yeah yeah go with it that's great so uh outside if you take your beer realm your beers that you represent out of the out of the uh out of the equation what is your go-to beer oh not saying any of these correct yep oh uh, um that's a good question oh, yeah. so okay so <laughs> All right, so beer wise, here's here's what I'm normally drinking nowadays. Like, so we all go through this uh, huge journey, right? With beer, you go through this full cycle of give me the craziest whatever, and and you kind of end up settling. At least for me, end up kind of settling down in a place. So for me, I drink very little, very little hoppy beer anymore. If I'm drinking a hoppy beer, it's usually a West Coast style IPA. That was the first style of IPA that I really pulled me in. Um, it was, uh, I can't mention Dale's Pale Ale, but Green Flash West Coast IPA, freaking love that beer. Um, and then, but again, you know, you don't find that around here as much, sure. but if I sit down at a bar and I see a West Coast style IPA, I'm, it's usually what I'm usually going to gravitate towards that. Um, and then I like German styles a lot, you know, I'm, I gravitate to a lot of the lighter stuff, um, or I go all the way over, um, into like stouts, porters. I love stouts and porters a lot. Cool. I don't really like them flavored or barrel aged as much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if there's stuff out, I just like the traditional um, kind of stouts. Uh, I'm a big old Rasputin fan. It's it's a good one. North Coast old Rasputin. Um, so yeah, they they make actually a really good stout. They really do. Yeah. yeah, you can't not complain about that one. No, not at all. I've never had Green Flash. 
but I will say West Coast is not my wheelhouse. You got no, I would, I would drink one uh, to understand it, uh-huh. but it's not West Coast is not one that I. You, you put ten of them up there. There's ten beers I could tell you won't have. It's just not my thing. I, yeah. just, I just don't do it. <laughs> I mean, I'll have one if we're doing one of these. Oh yeah. But otherwise, no. Well, we'll at least give them a try to make sure. Let's just see how it is and how it compares to the ones we've had too. Because again, we've had a couple here on the show that you know it's like, oh, this one's not so like piney. This one's not so like intense. And then there have been a couple where it's just like, yeah, I can have like. A couple ounces, and like I'm done. I'm tapping out. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and, well, you know, and like that's the conversation that comes up a lot of times with people is, um, just there's some. There's, that's why there's so many different styles, and there's yeah. there's something for everybody. And uh, we we have to get away from the 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 usage of like words like that beer sucks or whatever. Yeah. I, I always use that's not for me. Kind of. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't really pick that. It's not for me. It's not you know, my style. You kind of tell the difference between. This was poorly made, and this just isn't for it's me. Right, you know. So, um, just think that's something that that people need to, in, in all in all walks, really, like of life, you know. Because we tend to we tend to have this thing where we, we all think that um, we have to all like the same things, right. you know, and, or 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 you get offended, you know, if somebody says they don't like something that you like, you know. It's like me and Bernie have the opposite effect. We try to find <laughs> things that we do have disagreements on because <laughs> our palates are very similar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, you're right. I, we we try really hard to never say negative things about things. Yeah. Just because we don't like it doesn't mean it's bad. Right. Right. If people have to learn sometimes. Okay, this beer is just not your style. Uh-huh. That's not why you don't like it. You don't like it. It's just not your style. Except it's bad. Yeah. Now a bad beer is a bad, bad beer. beer. Yeah, yeah. But I think now, especially after COVID, I think nowadays if you're not making a good beer or at least a good enough beer. You're not going to stay around very long unless you're one of the really large companies that have the dollar to afford to play the money shuffle game, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so many companies. I mean, like, I think Denver started going, or not Denver specifically, but Colorado started going on a roll where it was almost like every week, every other week, you'd hear another brewery being shut down. It was just really not looking good for them over there. Yeah. And I mean, I know like one of the breweries that we used to go to, I, we enjoyed it, but it was a really, it was a microbrewery, Castle Rock Brewing. I don't know it. Yeah. And it's, it's, it wouldn't be too far from where Oscars is, I think, if I remember right. But neither here nor there. But I, it, it's not that they necessarily made a bad beer, but maybe more a, not good enough beer to keep uh, up with the competition. Yeah. And I think nowadays you don't have to say, that's a bad beer. I think it will just like self eliminate. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of see that as like, I mean, not so much anymore because I think less and less breweries, you can correct me if I'm wrong, are opening up now. But, you know, when you see like around here, like local breweries will open up and you, you kind of try their stuff in the beginning. And I think very few of them have like, something really great right out of the gate sure you know? oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's like definitely, pain, it's definitely a, a less common thing for them to have like an ace in the hole right off the get go yeah. but I, I mean there's been a, also there have been times too where we've gone to like a new brewery like a, a couple months after they open and it's just like they've got some good things going for them but they're already starting off on the right track I mean, even, yeah. you can tell if they're like if they're doing the right things to like start a barrel pro- a program or if they're you're just going to stick with a couple beers here or do like they're going to try and put themselves too thin or however they're going to go. It's just, you see like where they're going to, where they could or, you know, could fail or where they really might just succeed out of anybody else. Right. Yeah. So. Typically when a brewery starts with something worth a damn, it's because, and I know one brewery that did it, it's because they pinched a brewer from someone else uh-huh. and they brought their <laughs> stuff with them. Yeah. And that's why you're like, oh, wow, damn, this is good for you. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. I know that person from somewhere else, <laughs> and that happens. Uh, but otherwise, you're right. They're just they're they're trying to get their feet together because I don't care how good of a home brewer or any kind of small scale brewer you are, you just don't have the kind of scale touch to let you really know where you need to be with mm-hmm. them. Yeah. Right? It's kind of have to go. Right? Yeah. And I'm slowly touching. I'm, saying, I'm, yes, like, yes. I'm, I'm like I'm getting. That was my segue. Like, yeah. Get up here. <laughs> Right, so this is the, the second one. Which one is this one? This is the this is Double Dales. Double Dales. So this this uh, you might be surprised that I'm putting this where it is in the lineup. Yeah. But, um, this beer is a professional. We're gonna go, we're not gonna argue it, with it's you. It's a so. nine percenter, <laughs> and it's really gonna surprise you when you take a sip of it because it's. Uh, I always try to. 
something uh, other than saying smooth because everybody goes, oh, that's smooth. Sure, it's but, smooth. but it is it is very easy for a nine percent IPA. Uh, but it's very it's got a lot of um, uh, like candy and like uh, kind of um, uh, biscuity notes on the end to it. Okay. It's just um, but like when I. If I a word that comes to my mind when I try this beer is just candy. It's like candy to me. Okay. You know what I mean? One of those okay. ones that's nine percent and it's just like it kinda hits you in that feel. You know, like nice. like nice. that indulgent feel of like a candy. I I'm, I'm very curious now. You have to say to me. I, so. I'm, I'm all for some candy, so let's just get this a little college try. Definitely sweet on the nose though. It's sweet but light. It's yeah, not yeah, very it's heavy not at like, all. Yeah, it's not like a smack in the face, but it's enough to let you know. Say, hey, I'm I'm on the sweeter side. Yep. So I like this beer a lot. I wow. I, I drink them at home, and it takes me a couple to realize. I stand up and I'm like, oh, there's a lot of gravity yeah. in here right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, gravity really does work. Gravity yeah. does work. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um. So it's got, I think as it's warmed up a little bit too, a little bit more of that bite on the back yep, is taking, say, taking hold. It's got, it's got a little, little bit, bit of it. It's got a little bit of like that, that, like that grapefruit, whiny mm -hmm. kind of bite to it. Yeah, yeah. But very lightly. Mm -hmm. um, like, I mean, and I think on the show we've had a lot more doubles and triples than we have, you know, standard straight ups. Mm -hmm. And I think that like the big secret between the, behind the doubles and triples for people that don't mind a little bit more horsepower to it, like this is nine, and yep. this is only a double, right? Yep. Um, if you don't mind the horsepower, it, what it takes to get the horsepower out of it builds you this 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 smooth. There you go with the word smooth, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it, it really rounds out the edges for you. Mm -hmm. It really tames yeah. the bite. It brings it down, and it lets you. To me, it lets you enjoy the flavor more than. Then having to in experience the bite that was would have been there the first time around without that little additional support behind it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, are you a bourbon drinker? I am. Yeah. Okay, so like if you have a Four Roses, that's a sweet, calm drink mm -hmm. compared to maybe like an Elijah Craig. Uh -huh. It's got more horsepower. You're gonna have that heat hit you, right? Yep. And it's the same kind of premise right there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> On that segue, I, I, though, since you are a bourbon guy. Yeah. What's your uh, what's your go-to bourbon if you were to go to your house? Like what's your what's in your, your well? Product? It could be two different things. Your go-to might not be what you, your house. That's what I'm saying. It's all both. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why have more? You can have any. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's see. Okay, so I, I'm with. <laughs> I'm about bourbon right now. The way I think I was once about craft beer, which means I'm going to the store and I'm like picking something up all of the time, something different every mm -hmm. time. I mean, excuse me. Um, so like, there are some days. There's some days when I'm like, I'm just gonna pick up the regular old Forester. I know that that's like, it's just it's just nice, easy, and you can like mix that if you yeah, want to, absolutely. you know, that kind of thing. Um, let's see, I really, really glommed on to um, what's the what's the company that just came out here? Um, they are the owners are brewers, former brewers. <laughs> That just new riff, out. new riff. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm okay. really into the new riff uh, stuff. I like tried everything that they had. Um, I think. Hmm. Um, let me mill that over for yeah. a second. Yeah. We can move on. Yeah, you no, know, so you, you brought up bourbon. It's, I was like, it's, oh, it's, that's yeah. a good, that's a good it's little a big like. Question. But the funny part about it is, like, a lot of the people that I know, and it probably includes you guys, is like, I have never been a collector of anything. Oh, okay. And so I don't really collect bottles. Like I will like week to week, I'll like pick something new up, try it, and then and then maybe, you know, revisit it. I'm not the guy that's gonna like I mean, you all remember, obviously, when you could just pick up Eagle Rare mm. and Blanton's in the same shopping, you know, and, venture yeah. and just take them home. I we worked at a bar and that once was our a, Buffalo Trace. <laughs> Buffalo Trace was our rail um, at this uh, restaurant that I used to work at, you know, and um, just seeing what has happened is like, I, well, I know that there's more out there, so I usually just try to, tr you know, try something new. Sure. And, I mean, it's it's good to try the new things. It yeah. really is because I mean, just like with beer, you never know when that guy comes up and makes that that one bur that that bourbon. You go, oh my god, this is this is my this bourbon, is it, right? Yeah. Uh, and 
just because you like bourbon doesn't mean you always want the same style either. Yeah. Right. right? Because having a Blanton's or having a Michter's is two different creatures completely. Yeah. yeah. Right? You just hit a good one for me. Michter's? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I, used, uh, I actually used to sell it. And um, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's a great story behind that distillery as well because apparently with it, that recipe, the, the bourbon was bought from. Um, a, a company that was founded in Pennsylvania, and apparently that was the same stuff that uh, George Washington gave to his troops at Valley Forge. Same recipe. Wow. Okay. Um, so, like history, a lot of history behind that um, that uh, distillery. And uh, yeah, I like every single one. And, and, and there's like there's like one in that lineup for every kind of mood that you might be in. Like sometimes, like I always say, that American unblended, you could pour that sucker on pancakes. It's like sweet, <laughs> smooth. I love that stuff. That is my favorite right there it's from sweet. them. That is, that's it's the sweet. one that I always grab. When I see it, yeah. I grab it because try to find it out there. It's impossible, <laughs> right? Yeah. So if, if I see you, it, I just have to grab it. Well. I, I do. And I, you see varying prices on it, too, all over the place. I'm oh, in and out of stores the all the time. So it's I mean, like, it's not inexpensive. It's really not an expensive room. I, I agree, especially in Maryland. Yeah. It's like, okay, I have a child. I can sell them. Sure, yeah. I'll, just, I'll take a child. <laughs> yeah. It's just ridiculous. I don't know why. <laughs> just don't tell my child that I said I would sell them. You guys got to get, I know the guy that works for them in this area. You got to get him on here. Really? The Mictors guy, yeah. You got to get him down here. We got to know the guy. I think, I I, I can, I can. You can get us yeah, to know the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like a yeah. good getting right See, we, there. We know a guy now that knows a guy, so we are we're getting we're getting closer. <laughs> you know, that that's something I think we kind of hinge on here and there, more on a on a public kind of feel. How like beer, uh, a very common term is communal, right? Beer is communal, mm-hmm. but the the backside, the people actually work in the industry. They're actually a, 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 almost a tight knit small family. Almost everybody kind of somehow knows somebody, and yep. if not, you know someone that does know the somebody mm-hmm. kind yeah. of thing. So it's an interesting thing to point out. It's, yeah. it's no, not it's, people aren't hidden away from each other and they hide. It's not like that at all. They they, they know each other. Oh yeah, yeah, big time. So I, I cut you off to introduce yeah. to even bring that question up. So I apologize for that in the first place. What? I'd cut you off to ask you what your bourbon would go to. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. And that's so. like, it's it's totally fine. But it, it's such a such a uh, big question, loaded question. It's I guess so you would say well, for so, me anyway. For me, fair, no, I mean, well, I mean, right now we know you like the Mictors, though, right? Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah, thing. That's yeah. I, did like the I, I had some right? angels envy like, over the weekend. Yeah. Like it's just like something like we yeah. we did. Um, this past this, this year, I think yeah. it was this year was it last year? It was last year. I don't know. I don't remember anymore. We've done so many things. I don't remember anymore. But time. we did a bourbon trail thing, and we ended up at Mictors at Ooh, Uncle's nice. Envy at Four Roses at uh, Old Forester. It, it's fun to do those things and actually get to when you do them uh, two, three in a day, a day or two of them. You get to almost do this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you really get to start appreciating the differences behind all these yeah. distilleries. A little nuance, yeah. And it's very cool to go through them with the stuff you kiss up, pick up, you know, mm-hmm. right? The smells that take. It was like if you do Angel's Envy, have you been to their distillery? I'm not, no. One of the things they let you do is they actually go, I forget what they call it. It's not, is it soup? It's when it's still in a wet mash stage. They'll actually throw a ladle down and you pull it up and they give everyone like a little one ounce pour of it to let you actually oh. know what that where it came from of, yeah. the, of that taste like. Sure, that's cool. And that's super cool. I'm like, okay, this is awesome. You know, old forester, we're smelling the mash and they're being, you know, at that late stage and everything. It's a lot of fun to do that. And people never realize what's in that to make that. It's it's just as complex as this creature is. Mm-hmm. So it's a very cool thing. I'm good. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed that. You wouldn't have guessed that. I'm kidding. You just uh, I just you unloaded it. I haven't. I haven't been down to the trail yet to make my way. To I really haven't either. Do yeah. it. So it's so funny because I was just having this conversation with my wife. We don't have to go into it, but I was. We we're talking about taking trips. <laughs> That's what I meant. You're like, all right, cool. I mean, we can do the bourbon trail, baby. We have a friend that lives in Indiana. 
well, there you who go. needs visiting, you know? So and, 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 yeah, we have we have friends in Ohio, <laughs> and <laughs> there, there happens to be this airport that happens to be just at the right location that you just kind of keep going and you wind up there. It works out so well. <laughs> just saying. That's fantastic. So what is this third beer? Moving on. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm let's like, do it. Yeah. So this. Oh, I thought I heard. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought yeah, you said something. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> um, so Hazy Blues. Um, this okay. is a um, seven percenter. Um, is it regular we, or is this a double as well? No, uh, this is a Hazy IPA. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, from Oscar Blues. We launched this one, let's say, about a year and a half ago. Nice. Drinking it over there. This, this is going to be where our – well, actually, I can't say that. I was going to say this is going to be where – this isn't for me. I actually like this beer. Fair. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised because I don't really gravitate towards this style of, of IPA usually. But when I tried it, I was like, man, that's actually pretty good. And I've, yeah, I've peeled, you, I've, can't, I've, you can't see through it. So it's definitely. Before, uh, before I touch this, I want to do one thing real quick because we do this and everything. And we already killed our, our last one. That was yeah. at 9%. I, I want to say a few things about it, though, that I think are important. Mm -hmm. And the first thing is, at 9%, a lot of people start thinking you get the boozy feel out of it. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that 9%, you can't tell it's 9%. It's mm -hmm. just like you had said. You could kick back two, wow. three of them. If you don't have to hit the head and you're just sitting there, you don't realize it happened until you get up. And yeah. then you realize you did that, right? <laughs> so it's, it's really a good beer that way. Yeah. Um, it's got a slight, ever so slight... Um, a, a, a bitterness in the back end, just yeah. enough to let you know, hey, I am. I was going to say, yeah, I know, right? I know. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not hiding the fact. Yeah. But the rest of me is very smooth and rounded and very approachable. So it's a really good beer, especially if you do like something with a little horsepower and a little bit of flavor in that realm. That's yeah. actually a really good beer. Yeah. Just yeah. Too, like, like, with maybe this kind of maybe it was just that lingering feeling in the back that might just be confusing me. But I was like. It doesn't taste like boozy as the, as, it, as it were, but I had some kind of like bite to it, like it, it was subtle, and that might have been the IPA bite. Or but I was like, this could be like a seven percent like tasting style IPA. Right. Like, it's like you know, it's a double. You know, it's going to be a little bit higher, but like it doesn't taste like it should. But it doesn't taste super low either. Right, right, right. So I would say it, it it's been, not it even a sell like, itself as like a session beer, right? No, no, no. no, no. So by any I would have, have guessed it would have been like a seven around if you didn't tell me where it was, like seven, maybe seven and a half. I, 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 I agree with you. I think I would have stayed in the seven to seven quarter. I don't think I would even come into the sixes. I think I would have thought seven, seven and a quarter because it's got enough of the right flavor. Right. Profile. Mm -hmm. Nine, nine a million years, whatever. Yeah, it's no, no. I mean, maybe after three of them, but <laughs> yeah. nine, nine, nine. Oh, you wouldn't have known. But it would have known you. That <laughs> it would have known <laughs> me, Floor, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah. Experience. yeah, yeah. 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 But without oh. further ado, let's let's get this one to go yeah. around. Cheers, right. folks. Cheers. Yeah. To the haze. Oh, I like the smell though. Yes. Right off the nose, I like the nose. nose. Right off the bat, I like the nose. So. I think I was saying we launched this about a year and a half or so ago. Okay. Um, it's done. It's going crazy um, off the shelves, out of the taps uh, since we launched it. I need this because um, I'm about mm -hmm. to say something weird. Say something weird. <laughs> is this fruit juice? I know, right? Well, that's where I am with this. This is almost, to me, and I just want to make sure... This literally tastes like fruit juice. This is almost like a citrusy fruit juice. Yeah, it's got it's got that like, a level of sweetness that I just didn't expect in the hazy. Mm -hmm. That's nuts. It's good. So, and I don't know if that okay. So, I wish I had the answers when it came to this because why don't you? you? No, no. Well, you had at least I, three minutes to prepare. <laughs> <you're right. laughs> hey, that's, that's like ten seconds per beer. It's fine. Well, so normally, so normally I have. I think part of the reason that I don't gravitate towards um, hazy IPAs or, or unfiltered is, and I, this is what I was told, and I can't even give you an explanation for alpha acids, but there's a lot of alpha acids left over, okay. which tear me up, apparently. Oh, apparently. okay. When I drink this beer, I don't. it doesn't really seem to tear me up. Like uh, I, I don't believe there's a lot in from no. 
I don't know all the chemistry of how it works. So I'm like, I leave it to the geeks. I say, you know, you're the professional. Leave it to the geeks. The, the, the professionals behind the professional. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and they, so, so they don't one, tell us all their tricks either. So, oh no, 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 no. no. They don't want us to. There's none of that. It's all trickery, and we're not explaining it. But, right. it's like so magic. one of the things that we, we try to avoid on this show. Is anything that's smarter than two plus two? So we're not going to get into any yeah. kind of chemistry or anything like that. We don't. We mention it here and there sometimes. Sometimes, you know, uh, acidity will show up. Like, like anyone who's ever brewed anything, they know hops is kind of the creature behind it, and mm-hmm. hops has the different acidities and all. And we try not to get into it. Yeah, just because we try to keep it more more simple. Simple layman, like yeah, this is what this this is just so I can understand like. it. I don't yeah, but the cool part that history. you mentioned, no, it was it was good that you mentioned that though because that I didn't know. Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, what oh. I'm saying about the alpha because if anyone that has that problem, there is a beer that you can drink that you shouldn't really experience that issue with sure. potentially. Yeah, potentially. potentially. Yeah, right. We're not yeah. we're not professional. Well, he is. <laughs> we're not a Definitely professional. Not. You can blame him. <laughs> um, to me, this is. The first one I think I've ever had that's quite this, I hate to say juicy. I want to say it. That surprises me. I'm going to say it because it's got, it's got like a sweet note to it that I'm not used to in a hazy. Uh-huh. The more I drink it though, the more I'm like, I'm getting a little bit does of it like. Does it start to fade away? It does start to fade away. So like I'm a little more than halfway through this little five ounce pour. It's the juiciness of it. The initial like just hit you in the face like, hey, you're drinking fruit juice. I'm not getting anymore. I'm getting it to be like, all right, cool. It is a citrusy beer. Okay. But I'm also starting to get like, because IPAs aren't like my personal go-to, I, I tend to pick up like the, the bitterness or like the, the hoppy, the, uh, I guess the, whatever, like the tingle, I guess, in the back. I'm starting to get that now. Don't shake your head at me, Bernie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I didn't do that. There's pretty, no proof pretty, of me pretty, shaking it at me, and I no, no. Well, there's, there's no proof of me doing that at all. No, I didn't do that. So, like, uh, most of our, like I said, most of our, like we said earlier, like our palates are very similar. Uh, we try to find things where they're different, and IPAs are more of Bernie's side of the the Venn diagram, and mine are more like the sours and and, and oh, okay. like, so, like, so basically, I like good beer, and he likes some of the junk beer. In there. <laughs> but we also like a lot of like the good beer too, Bernie. So <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Just messing around. No, I know. Yeah. Actually, um, well, you know what? We we can, we can even talk about that right now. What What are your thoughts on sours? Please, I mean, okay, so <laughs> we, we, we don't glad, spoil it. We don't have com- any tonight. Yeah. Glad we're having this conversation. Though. Uh, <laughs> are you? Because I yeah. Because okay. I just mentioned what, you know how I react to a lot of these. Uh, sure. Sours probably beers. kill you. So they didn't used to. Um, and again, like. I don't think I think if I had had this when I was younger, this style of beer because it's, it's still fairly new. Mm-hmm. Would, new England style has been oh they're not a very old beer I mean, at it's, all. It's been going it's been going on for oh, a, yeah. the life of the trend has been going on for a very long time now. I think longer than any other sure. trend that's flowed through the, the any, IPAs. And that's kind of oh. we, we've just actually oh. discussed it before. Like we're going to finish this hour, but you just you yes, just you, a second you question. Sparked up Go another ahead. question. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, so. The sour, yeah. Um, the first time I tried a sour, I was like, "That tastes like straight bile. Tastes like <laughs> tastes like stomach acid." Oh, no. Now, 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 yes. now. That was the first time I tried one. Yeah. Okay, I tell you, the first time I tried an IPA, I pointed to him was like, "I will never drink anything sure. that tastes like that." So that, that was, that was so that, me too. So, so that being IPA. said, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so when it comes to uh, sours, I enjoy them. I enjoy them in small doses, though. I have a friend that would drink them until he would barf. Like I mean, he'd drink them all day long until it like made him barf. Uh, and I, I, I can't. I, I won't get sick on them. But I, I yeah. will drink them all day. <laughs> but yeah. So like I, again, it's one of those things that like I'll take a little bit of and I'll like be able to go. Okay. Uh, you know I, I I can enjoy that. Sure. You know, I like some of the more mild ones. So what is it, Duchess? You know, is a little bit more mild yeah. than you know a lot of the stuff. But once you start, once you release these beer styles into the United States, we. I like to take it and run with it to oh, the yeah. extreme, you know, when it comes that's, to that's like IPA, like, like American stuff it with <laughs> make as big as humanly possible. Yes, so. yes. Okay. absolutely. So, so I'm not going to touch what you just said yet because I want to continue the sour concept. Yeah. Okay. Right. And so, once upon a time, you could say IPA. I want a IPA, uh-huh. and you would get 
basically what's considered today a West, West Coast. Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right? IPA, yeah. But that's where the catch is right there. You would get a West Coast. We're drinking a hazy. IPA has almost become the umbrella term now for all, for all the facets it's grown into. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. I'm not, and I'm not saying you can't just order an IPA, but I mean, generically speaking, it's becoming almost the umbrella term. Do you feel sours are going the same way? And I say that because right now you have like the, the fruit sour, yeah, fruit yeah, sour, fruit and sour and smoothie and sour. sours. You have like the yeah. gozes. You've yeah. got, yeah. The, you got those, the, the milkshakes. I mean, well, you how the can you argue house, with what he's saying got, right now? You know, right? This is just sales. just rap, oh, right, it's right, so right good. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and you have like those actual traditional sours where they're like they're still a beer, but they have like so the, the sour tart undertone to them. Yeah. Like where they're not like salty like a goza, they're not like super funky like a farmhouse. They're they are like the, the what used to be like the core of what a sour beer was, I guess when they were new. Mm-hmm. So what what do what do you what are your thoughts on that? Do you do you think that I mean, especially being that you have multiple multiple under your umbrella for a company? I hear a lot out there for some reason. Do you feel that sour is becoming an umbrella term? Do you see that happening? You mean in the way that like like the IPA is an umbrella term. Yeah, I mean, oh, definitely. I mean, yeah, it's tough. Like, I still see a lot of, you mean that it's not being separated? Right, so like the, the term like an IPA either, could, could scare somebody away because of what they're thinking of what an IPA is. Right. Or like what they think of a sour is. It can, yeah. Because it can be so many different facets yeah, yeah. of what the style I'd, is. I'd have to say yes, because, I mean, I... Yeah, I think so. Um, you really have to ask. Like, I have to ask about IPAs now. If I go, if I go and sit down, and you've got American something that's labeled American IPA on the uh, menu out there, like I have to ask. Is it New England? Is it West Coast? Right, right. Where, right. where, where, where what, like, what, where in America? Yeah, okay, I right. see them constantly out sure, there. Yeah. You know, the American IPA. I'm like, okay, because uh, I've ordered it before, not even thinking, and it, here comes a, a glass of thick stuff um you know unfiltered stuff and, I'm, you're and then i'm like see oh. something more like that and you're <laughs> yeah. seeing more like that and you're like yeah. that's not what i wanted yeah we, we're, we're gonna move to this I was gonna say not that you- letting go of that other th- you said a magic word in here and i'm gonna get to it <laughs> okay, we did we did we're gonna go okay. for that one next but right. so but now hold on don't, don't, don't slam by <laughs> <here. laughs> see how there's three empty you know what that means Do we have three more ah three what though we're not in Oscar Blues anymore oh yeah that's right oh uh, you know what fair point yep. good, good call yep. this is now Cigar City I hate to say it we're in Tampa we are We are in Tampa we're that in Tampa is the right home now. of Cigar yeah. City yeah. yes I, I, I know some about Cigar City yeah this will be hold on to your pants <laughs> the first time I've ever had a Cigar City beer how so? I don't think that's true. It is. Even in Florida, every time I've gone out, I've just never seen a Cigar City for sale because the shelves have been empty for that slot, so I'm picking up other stuff. Hmm. Over here, they've had some here and there, but, but the problem is when you have 101 lines, no mind you're doing that. Like, right, hey, you now, right but still, to it, yeah. There are so many other things that sometimes you go, oh, let me, I, ooh, look at that thing. I want that. Right. Yeah. That's it. And I, it's, it's I've so, definitely had cigar, a cigar city before, I, especially like this last one. I've definitely had I, I, So I'm super excited to try this because mm-hmm. this is their brown. Yep. And we will get to the brown conversation because I have I, I have my own opinions on browns. You do. Um, but I'm about this. This is which one right here? So this is Fancy Papers. This is a Cigar City's um, Hazy IPA. Oh, okay. perfect. Hazy to Hazy. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Just bounce right over. Yep. You know what? Before I even do that. Yeah, I'm give gonna it a rinse. Oh, you know what? Here, I'll, I'll cleanse mine too. Here we go. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Absolutely. All right. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Definitely not as citrusy on the nose, but it's still not. there. It's smelling like pear or something. Yeah. But it's a li- but it's also lighter. It's a, yeah, I, I was gonna say it's a it's little a, bit. Not, it doesn't have a heavy nose. Yeah. Definitely. A- yeah, there's like a. It's not a sweet. No, I think you're right. Like a matter pear, of fact, pear, pear is very close to what you can get. I, I think that, that might be why I'm tasting it the way I am. Is because you know how pear is more about that drier kind of fruit yeah. flavor to it. Yeah, this has got a little bit of that going on to it. Sure. It's not. It does. It's not 
remotely near to the sweet level. No, it's definitely on the drier side. At least I'm, I'm getting that dry, that, that dry feeling yeah, it, for sure. And, and I hate to say that this is off balancing me, but I almost feel like this is even the skosh, like drier than like most hazies are. I, I well, that's feel what I'm saying. A little it's, like it's, dry, dry. But it could be that pair that we're kind of thinking Maybe. that we're tasting. I mean, yeah, it could be a couple of different things. But I know it's definitely definitely by comparison. Again, it could be skewed from... Definitely dry. That's why I wanted to try and just start from scratch with, or start with a little bit of water. Well, that's hard. We're three past scratch. <laughs> just saying. Yeah, right. <laughs> just <laughs> just <laughs> saying. <laughs> All right, Bernie, twist more. Bernie's going to... Have another Bernie. beer. Yeah. Okay. So, IPAs. There was a, there's, I wish I remembered the word now because we talked so much, but there was a particular a fad. word. It wasn't fad, actually, but it, it, it was in that, in that but realm. It was in the realm of yeah. fad that you had pretty much <laughs> cast that light onto IPAs. I, With hazies. I, I think, and I was going to say that, I think you're yeah. really focusing at the hazy because that's what we're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, trend. Trend, trend was the word we used. Trend, And fad, we're saying that, 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 that the, the hazy is a trend. Um, well, at this point, I don't think it is now. Oh, but you felt that before. Sure, sure. Because okay. remember, we went through this. We went through black IPA. We went oh, through yeah. uh, Belgian gonna... style IPA. We went through oh, yeah. ha- uh, our session IPA. Yep. Then we went through hazy IPA. But all of those, all of those were like kind of a flash in the pan. Which I wish the black IPA wasn't. I was going to say I've had a couple of, like, in my earlier beer drinking years. It was like I was like, oh. That means it should be malty and sweeter, so it shouldn't be near as bitter, a hobby bitter as like I just go. But like, they would load them. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Back in black from Twenty First Amendment, man. I, I oh my god! There you yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I don't think I, I, no, I don't think they make. I don't think I've seen that in a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there we go. There's a there's a back one, right? Yeah, yeah. Jeez, I pull out a lot of that. I'm a slave to a lot of the older. Uh, <laughs> yes. You know what? No, 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 no quarrels here. <laughs> Kind of like you, you get stuck into like a genre of music, you know yep. what I mean? Like, and you never leave it. Like a not a genre, but like a a, a yeah. year. Yeah, know, well, an no, era. I, I get stuck in like I'm still stuck. Yeah. I'm like between the '90s and the early 2000s. There you go, so there I was you like, go. all right, cool. Yeah, I couldn't tell you half of what the new bands and and, right. and artists are nowadays. <laughs> like, ah, do you mean like Green Day, like uh, uh, like Stained and stuff like that? I was like, just like cool like all right it's not cool i don't care it's that's music i still like <laughs> i mean it's it's it, it is a thing it is yeah. Um, so yeah so i think that 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 style has definitely surpassed the word trend it's here to stay okay you know okay so so you do find it to be especially at this point a real creature yeah, that's a real yeah, I, what started not, off as a yeah. trend is really yeah. gonna is, yeah. is here to stay i definitely think so and i um i think that you know, we're probably starting to see um, and going to start to see more, less and less people buying the um, $16 four-pack, 16-ounce cans right. like they used to. I don't know. You guys tell me. I, I never really bought them, and I never really lined up for them. But like, uh, I, I would say, I would say uh, out here, I think that is still kind of still a strong warm yeah. it is i i think when you're getting to the, the those once you exceed the 20 dollars where it starts to really start to i think peter out yeah i mean i the, the worst i think i've seen was 32 for a four pack for a four pack that's crazy yeah, and, no. and, and, and i you usually don't i usually don't anymore. go above like 15 for a four pack actually anymore just because like again um, just to try and avoid that like, all right, if you if, if you make that market, or if you if you make it that price, they're gonna buy it. And if they do, then great, we're gonna keep selling it. Or if you don't, maybe they'll bring the price down. So I will say, That's my hope. <laughs> yeah, I will say this. Well, let me say one thing. Every once in a blue moon, I actually do have to check my phone, so I apologize. It's we actually still have real jobs too, right? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, I, I will say this. When you're talking, when you're talking a thirty-two dollar four pack. First, I'm not. First, I'm not doing it right. The problem is when you see what it is, you end up buying it. And the reason for that is that that thirty-two dollar four pack is you are lucky that you're at the right place, and they have it because most of the stores I see they get that four pack, and they're literally pulling them out of the four packs and they're putting them on the shelf as a single. 
for twelve to fifteen dollars a piece. Yep. That thirty-two dollars is a steal comparatively. Right, right. Now I will not say what that is because I don't think that we should be talking about no, no. the politics of pricing. It's it, that's individual. That I'm not into that. No, yeah. But there are beers out there. Um, and you know what? Because you're here, I can bring this up. In Maryland, you have to be careful because when when ten fifty comes out. Mm -hmm. And you get the barrel aged, mm -hmm. all of a sudden that price does a little bit of the whole skyrocketing thing. Yeah. And there are stores I've seen that will pull them out. You're selling them individually for what you're expecting, right? To be close to what the four pack is. Yeah. And you're like, what is this? Yeah. Right? So it does happen. Yeah, oh, 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 a lot. Yeah. You brought up you brought up a great beer though, too. So we're gonna bring we're gonna catch back around on that. So go ahead and just finish your, your thought. Oh, no, I was just going to say, yeah, it, being somebody that's bouncing around from store to store all the time, I see it a lot. You see the stores, you know, some stores hike things up, and some stores are really fair. Sure. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be like one of those things where it's just like, yeah, it's going to change from store to store. So maybe maybe shop around a little bit before you get the full trigger. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you, you, you need to do two things, I think. We need to shop around, and I think you have to really consider what it is you're buying, and do you feel you're comfortable paying that dollar for it? Yeah. Because another thing to consider, that beer, and I've had, believe it or not, I've never bought a 10 fitty at the liquor store to bring up. Now, I've had them here, though, right? right? So then you have to start questioning, do I want to spend probably what I would pay for one here right. and bring it in. But it always winds up that I'm like, hey, I'm hanging out over here. I mean, yeah. keep you're in mind, here. folks, yeah. we, we didn't get this just because we're strangers here, right? <laughs> yeah. They know us here <laughs> we, quite we well. once or twice. Or twice, yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, I think you have to really rationalize to yourself what you feel good about spending on a beer. And you should do it, though, because this is also how you guys keep alive, all right? Yeah, I mean the dollar. The dollar is there for a reason. As long as the store is not trying to rip off people, there there's a there's a dollar involved in some of these beers, and that's what keeps everything running. Don't get me wrong, barrel ages aren't cheap. Yeah, you know, but they're also, and you're also paying for the process and the time, and the labor that goes into those barrel, which is why, you know, they're a commodity. Like there there are fewer of them because you can't just like brew them willy nilly. They have to be done in smaller batches and in you have know, you know, limited timelines where you can like we are going so far off of this pricing thing, right. but, 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 but over the years you know every like we've this barrel age 1050 for example we've had to kind of back off on the price like anybody else because you kind of run into that um you know sort of the remember the whole craze with like climbing the elder yeah, well, that was such a big deal. Sure. Yeah, it's like then you got tons of beers out in the market that are very comparable to that beer. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like it, it's not as highly coveted anymore. So you really have to kind of come off of it. Like I think they still, I think they've already done that with the Bourbon County. Yeah. Anyway, you know? but yeah, so they've they've dropped their price a little bit. So only because you said those magic too. words, Bourbon County. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I think Bourbon County now. Or at least has been for the last little bit here, are trying to get a little more. Um, I don't want to say eccentric, but maybe exclusive with their beers. Where, oh, we happen to have the Blanton's Bourbon County. Uh, right. We happen to have the Willet Bourbon County. Yeah, they'll do. And like when you, when you do that, country. I think that's quite smart, though. Being the way the bourbon is, I think that like it, your, it becomes, your bourbon drinker is going to be like, oh, wait, that's a Blanton's. Yeah. Bourbon County, I want that. And the side note, I couldn't get one because I tried. We did. And the thing is, it's not it's not a cheap creek. That that's actually I think that's another secret. When you say it's a Blanton's Bourbon County, you not you're not thinking four, six, eight dollar beer. All of a sudden you're thinking Blanton's kind of price. You're right? thinking so you, like twenty, you thirty, that price, fifty dollars. You're not thinking, oh, that's a horrible price. You're like, how do I get it? Right. Right, it's just all of a sudden your brain goes into that other the, place. Yeah. The exclusivity, right? and of the it wife is, is at like, home going, "You did what?" And you're like, "Wait, what did he do?" No, this makes sense to me. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> Stop talking. It makes sense. It's guy sense. It's good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
you know, I don't know. The whole pricing thing. Speaking of pricing, by the way, like I, I don't want to put you into cardiac arrest, but Ooh. I was in a store the other day and there was a bottle of Nectar's American Unblended and they were charging $99 for it. <laughs> Holy cannoli. <laughs> I know. I was like, but it was like that for every, I mean, they had tons of different stuff in the store and I was just like, man, if you die, if you would... If you would just come down on some of this stuff, you would move a lot of this. You would be selling <laughs> product. So, I mean, it's so, like awkward at that point. So I, I'm in a couple of different like, like um, cyber groups mm -hmm. uh, between Facebook or Reddit or whoever. Right. And all of a sudden, you'll see someone come. They'll post a picture. No. Yeah. Oh yeah. Add yourself. I'm, I'm pushing bro. Like, they'll gotcha. they'll, they'll post. Up here. They'll <laughs> post a picture and go. Oh my god! Here. Look how much this bourbon is. But if you look, everything on this oh. shelf is ridiculously priced. There is dust, though, caked on all the bottles. I yep. know. When you see dust caked on your bottles, it means it's too much. Just walk away. It's not because it came that way. Yep. <laughs> Take your losses. Get out of here. That's all I can do. Just, oh, my God. Yep. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, but you guys brought up a, a, a beer of your guys. The, or a, it's the 1050 and the, even the barrel-aged version. Uh, people who don't know what that is, do you want to explain just we brought up a couple times in a few oh, conversations. Yeah. You might explain, like, to be like, what is 1050 if they don't know, if they haven't seen it? So, yeah, 1050 is actually, um, it's the, I think it's my favorite beer that we make. Okay, um, I can do it. But, Definitely the top part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but we're all stop people here. It's too, true, yeah. So, uh, that, that, that. Now, a little biased. Now, I gotta say, I, I, I don't prefer barrel age 1050 sure. to regular 1050 because 10 regular 1050 is like a punch in the mouth when it comes to like bitterness i think it's like 99 or so ibus like it's really really high on the bitterness um it pours like motor oil um you could pour it into i've, I've done beer dinners before you can pour it into a glass and put your flashlight up to it light does no, not pass through no. it. it's like a void of space <laughs> Um, it's like I, that extra uh, black paint. I have, I have poured a black hole. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I shall now consume it. Yeah. So, You're um, like Thanos in the beer world. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Sorry. That was getting, that was getting geeky. Sorry. I was like, yeah. do you know, what, do you know Thanos. Who yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll call the guy. Yeah. Okay. There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, so, you know, we, we, it comes out every year around September. Um, probably hits the market right around like October. You know, late September. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, so 1050 refers to the um, ABV, which is 10.5. Yep. Uh, also, we say that it um, FIDI stands for Fuck Industry, Do It Yourself. Um, and then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That's fantastic. And so um, then um, we also had to do Barrel Age 1050, which right. I believe historically. Uh, don't quote me on this, but I think we use Heaven Hill barrels. I think. Okay. Um, not the hard part about not quoting you is the camera right there. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I just wanted well, to point that out. They, they can not quote me on that. Oh, sorry. Right, you, you heard him. But you heard him. Don't, don't, I, don't, don't quote him. I think him. I can almost guarantee that we have used them before. Oh, there, there you go. There yeah, we're good. We're good. But I, I, will, I will say this for at least for our area. When and I, I'm gonna go to a second point too. When you're in, when when 1050 drops out here, basically if you don't buy it when you see it, it's you're gone. not. It's not a second chance stock kind of no. situation. It that really is, does. It's definitely a fast. buy it when you see it kind of beer Ten, around here. 1050 is one of those stouts in the world, especially now. Keep in mind, I understand there's multiple types of stouts. I mean, Guinness. That's a that's a that's an Irish, right? That's a dry mm -hmm. Irish. It's not anywhere near comparable to 10 fit. It's a different creature. Yeah, yeah. So just to say you're a stout fan doesn't yeah. sometimes you know, equivalent. You know, but if you're into that kind of stout, don't think just grab because you're not going to get a second chance on it. Yeah. Now, I do love stouts, but I also love the barrel-aged versions of them because I, I understand that on to it, you lose some of the originality mm -hmm. of the stuff you yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. But I also dig what it does to the stout because I I, I like my bourbon, so that just I yeah. mean it, it's a thing. I dig what happens to the beer. Mm -hmm. Right? No. I, I dig both sides of the coin. So No, I, I like I I think that's a fair point. I just I I think 
preferentially for me. Like they, sure. they usually come off a little bit too sweet for me. You know, I like to have some bitterness in the stout. But they, they are, they are they, sweet. You know, yeah. you get a lot of that vanilla from from um, like barrel, the barrel. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to say Dusty said it, but your opinion is wrong. But I said that just in case Dusty was listening. <laughs> I'm completely messing with you. Your opinion no, you're is spot on. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, what are we doing here? Let's go on the next one. Oh, this is Highlight. Oh, I've heard that oh, okay. one. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I never have gotten a chance to watch a highlight game in person. So it's, never in person. it's not a not a nutty sport. Yeah, I actually, you, I, I you watched it at the, the beginning of Miami Vice. It, uh, <laughs> Remember who was in the uh, yes, yes. Okay credits? But that's about so it. I just saw. I didn't realize that's what it was. I saw. It, I saw on the TV. Okay, yeah. I saw the TV yeah. that, like here at Brisk News like the other night. It's like. And this looks kind of like racquetball, but they've got like, the the curved head. This like, weird what thing. is this? This and then they were playing like, like, oh, ball, ball, the place, yeah. I was like, I could watch this for hours. Yeah. And like I literally did. I think I watched it until it went off. And I was like, cool. And then when I saw the beers, like it all clicked. And I was like, all right. Everything came together at that point. There so. you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's um uh, I think the fastest uh, ball in any sport. Yep. 180 plus mile yeah, an hour. That's absurd. Yeah, because yeah. because that weird. I don't that know hook, what you. Yeah. That hook, oh, yeah, hook thing, you are just like you can get that it. rip action off yeah. of that. I think just goes. Yeah. And here, my understanding is that's a solid ball. Mm-hmm. Right. So you're, yeah. it, you're like if you drop it, it just goes. And that thing is just off the walls yeah. and humming. It's I mean, like, they're covered in pads. Do you remember the episode? They had an episode of Jackass where the uh, highlight yes. players were putting yeah. like like oranges and like can or not cantaloupes, but like grapefruits, yeah, and winging them at them and just bruising Ooh. them up. Yeah, oh. yeah. You should find that. Yeah, <laughs> you guys should put a clip of that <laughs> inside of your. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you ever wanted to clip something, you just found the clip. Got it. In there. Got it. Future me, keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but, 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 so, so, but, but, yeah, but highlight being a tradition down in Florida, not so prevalent as it used to be like one day, but, you know, sort of apparently like the racetrack, people would go down and, and sure. bet on the sport. That was um, much more of an 80s. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, I, I've never experienced it myself, so. Yeah. Not getting so much of a nose on this one. So. Now I'm stuck with it. Now I'm stuck with the whole name. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Google the opening. Oh. <laughs> um, Whoa! But, um, but yeah. So this beer, this is this is my wheelhouse. If you, if you were to ask me the same question you asked me before, but in the reverse, in the reverse, this is it. This is my go-to. Got it. Um, it would be followed probably by Dale's. I was going to say Dale's was one of the, my intros to um, hoppy beer IPAs. Okay. I mean, because you're splitting hairs with with Dale's. Like Dale's IPA doesn't sound as great as Dale's Pale Ale does. But, sure, but it's I mean it's aggressively hop Pale Ale, um, six point five percent. But enough about Dale's. I love this beer so much. Uh, it was an eye opening ex- experience. I I also pronounced it wrong the first time I ordered it. I was in Pennsylvania because mm-hmm. we used to go to Pennsylvania to get beer um, because we they they could get beer that we couldn't get here in Maryland. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we would I mean, go to bars. I, and Everyone would, knows State Line Road because there's a uh, right across yep. the line. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. So the first time I said I'll take a Jai Lai, and it was love it. Oh what? It. You're like a Hoosier J- Jai Lai, yeah. <laughs> so yep. folks, we so are drinking hi- the Jai Lai. So High Lai IPA. <laughs> uh, and where, where does it seven and a half? I was gonna say seven, seven and a half. half yeah. Okay, cool. So this is kind of another one that's like, I mean, I like drinking this. That's it. It's not super like. Does it taste like it should be? Can everybody drink every time they see me burp? They've seen me burp so far on this. Like, you can make a great drinking. Oh, we'll, we'll, do because, a little, we'll do a little counter you, right you here. Should, you should stop it every time. Just, <laughs> I'm, I've been trying to hide you know it. You know what you want to do with me. You're like, all right, cool. I understand. We've turned into a drinking game, folks. This is, how, this is what's happened here. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We've lost That's control. That's fantastic. Sorry. <laughs> um. We've lost control. I, 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 I have lost my just, entire just, train of just pause it and go ding, ding, <laughs> ding, and do a counter every time you see me burp. I've been trying to hide it a little bit or like be oh, discreet, cool. but no, it's okay. all good. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, you know what? There's there's no rules. <laughs> Once you step into it's this kind, rule, it's kind of, it's kind of like table. that show on TV. It's like yeah, the rules don't uh, the, uh, the rules are there, but the points don't matter, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Reverse that. The points <laughs> count, but the rules don't matter. <laughs> Or count the points and the rules don't matter. I don't know. That's what I just said. 
I thought you said the points count. The points count. I said count yeah, the I points. The same difference. Jesus Christ, drink right beer. There. This is why we drink beer. So we should have beer. <sighs> West Coast style IPA. Yep. Um, yeah. This is my jam. Right, so I will say this. I, got I don't know. The nose when I got it though. I it don't is like know a smack it's, in the face. I don't know if it's because we've been doing this long enough. A couple days. Like eight and a half, I think. Maybe 12. Um, I don't find them. I still don't go after them. Uh -huh. I, I don't. But I don't find them as repulsive as I used to. Mm -hmm. um, this particular one here. Um, I wish I could remember the one. I, we, there, there's one. If you go back through all our episodes, you should watch them all. Somewhere I do mention the West Coast where I find yeah, it. Do. I find it really palatable. Mm -hmm. I think I find this one maybe the, the second most palatable. Uh, yeah, it's right there. It's it's letting you have all the attributes of a West Coast where it's got the dryness and the bitterness. It's, it's got all that, like that resiny notes and everything. Mm -hmm. But those, all those attributes, minus the dryness. Let's take the dryness out of the equation. All the other notes of, of a West Coast, I don't find aggressive in that way, right I find it a, 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 I find it approachable it's not like it's going to just like what I've heard a couple like I've heard green flash is one of those beers that really if you're not into it you're just gonna get hit with it right of oh, the West Coast yeah. yeah so now when it comes to the dryness though I think this does have the full-on dryness of West Coast mm -hmm. would have I think that part is definitely there the the alcohol the horsepower nil I, you know what? You can, yeah, sure. Seven and a half. That's what. That's what it says on paper. It yep. doesn't drink seven and a half. No, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. If you're into the whole West Coast, or you think you want to do the West Coast, this is a this great place. A to, to this is a great for. place to try too. Yeah, it's not not super like not like licking a pine tree. You're not getting like that heavy, like tarry. Count that to him, and that will do. It, it's a yeah. Uh, no, you eat your own counter. <laughs> no, I don't want a um, counter. But no, it's like it's a little bit drier, but nothing. It's not. I would still say that the one we had before this, like it was drier than this is. Um, it's. I'm still trying to like find something that I. Not like I'm trying to find something bad about. I'm trying to find something like that. It's like it's really sticking out. It's like, hey, this is nearly not it for me. It's like, ah, oh, but I'm like, I'm having a hard time. So I'm doing that. So like it's a pretty you can't hate it. But that's what I'm saying. I'm not hating it and I'm not hating on it. But like because like I'm trying to say if there's anything here that doesn't suit me. So I'm not finding anything specific. That shirt suits you well though. No, Look you. at that shirt. Oh, yeah. Hey, you got one too. It's quite oh, nice. Look at that. Look at that. Hey. They're not suits, but they're still good shirts. What do you see? Yeah. Tangent. I'm good for those. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, you said shit. Sure. This, I went with it. Fair. Same, same, they're same. <laughs> uh, I'm out. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say about this beer, uh, it's number one in all of Canarchy. You want to take that? No, it's okay. No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Might I be am, funny. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm good. This is not an important one. It does not matter. So this is number one in all of Canarchy sales wise. Okay. Um, I think a lot of a lot of that has to do with the quality of the beer, but also it's very recognizable. Uh, Florida is a destination. Sure. What? Florida is a destination. Who did that happen? I, exactly. Uh, also, they sell it in Disney. I thought. They, yeah, so so this is what was keeping people from punching themselves in the face while they were walking around, you know, in Disney with their kids. <laughs> High Lie IPA. I hear it all the time. Oh my God, I was drinking that in Disney. So I can't. I've never been to Disney. I actually didn't. I haven't either. <laughs> I, wait, what? Never been to Disney. I'm trying to make that work in my head. Yeah, I know. Anyway, so when I said. What Florida's a destination? I was I was just being facetious. Uh, yes, very. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, understood. Okay, good. Just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, I I think I'm going to be honest. I haven't been in South Florida in 
my daughter is so old. Couple days. And uh, maybe like 14 or uh, 16 years. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> There'll be a larger tick for that guy right there. That's just an all out. He's, he's giving up hiding. Anyway, That's you were fantastic. saying. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I've been in, you know, I've been in Central and Northern more so lately. And um, you do, you, you see Cigar City everywhere. They, they are yeah. around, right? They're, they're there. I just. So my new hangout in Florida is in the panhandle. I'm not going to get specific. Yeah, but I one of the know, other episodes, you'll know where it is. It may, there's a potential that I may have said it, but What's um, the there, the beer, the beer scene isn't as huge at all in the Panhandle area, and you can go to these 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 liquor stores. You just don't see the kind of the kind of space for beer as you do like over here. They have smaller spaces, so when you get there, like, I want to throw a shout out to a beer company that has nothing to do with this, but they're a small company. Mm-hmm. I do love them, and they're, and you know what, I'm not going to, because then you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, but so Brewery X, which is actually a really, they're local, and they'll have like one little like sleeve on the shelf, and that's it. Right, so Cigar City has two sleeves on the shelf, and that's it. And you're like, really? I mean, we're not that far from Tampa, folks. Right. Why am I not seeing, like, you know, three shelves of it? Much less just doing like, two little slots. Everybody's of fighting their, their right. market share at that point. So it's, it's there. It's just sometimes hard to get because there's just not enough space given to them. Okay. Right? It's there. I, you see the tags. Yeah. They're just they're empty because people are taking them off, yeah. which is a good thing to see for a brewery because yeah. that means people are liking the beer. Don't get me wrong. It just makes it hard to it's, get it if you want to try yeah, some. It's good and bad. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there is Mike. He's trying to say something. But here's the problem. Yes. I know what that is. Me too. Well, so I know the style. I always forget the name of this. Medora. 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 There you go. Medora. Yeah, I've had... So, so I'm going to start with this here. Medora, what's the uh, what's the horsepower? Five point five. See, it's a beautiful. It, you're in the wheelhouse of a brown, right? Brown should be in that five to six zone. Yep. Not a lot of people do browns anymore. It's almost Unfor- all, it's unfortunate. It's, it's it's a losing art for some reason, and I think part of the reason is you can't do all like the extravagant things to it. You it, there, there isn't a lot of pop to a brown. I think a brown is like a lager, like a pilsner. Mm-hmm. It's it is. You this is the dark really version of it. You can't hide anything in the damn thing because if you screw it up, you screw it up, right? right? And I will say a lot of breweries have a tendency to make a brown, I'm not hating, but kind of middle road, nah, it's a beer, whatever, kind of walk away from, right? Now, I, I'm going to give props. I don't normally do this. I'm going to, but um, Big Sky. You guys make a brown ale that is definitely hands down worth drinking. I've never had it. What now? I've never had it. Brown ale? Uh, the Big Sky Big brown ale? No. Okay, so Big Sky makes one called Moostrol. Oh, I've seen it around. Yes. yes okay. That I've is their brown. And in the home brew world, if you hit one of the online... Uh, supply houses, mm-hmm. you can find Caribou Slobber, which is the clone of the Moose clone Drool. Of it, yeah. Moose Drool. There we go. I'm joking. I'm having a stroke. Don't mind me. That's yeah. fine. Um, so I'm super excited to try this because I've heard... It's, it's good. I've heard things about it, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do this. Okay. So this is... um, Before you do, yes. this is arguably the best brown ale in the country, being that it it's won the gold at the Great American yes, Beer great. Festival last clear, clear, three clear years ballot. running. Yeah. Um, so I think one of the big keys to this beer, in my opinion, flaked oats. I think it gives like that. It gives more of a full body in yep. your mouth. It like I don't want to say chewy, but I'm going to say chewy, like well, slightly chewy. Okay. Um, but it, it's just a wonderful beer, and like it just got the the best balance. Look, I didn't say smooth, but it's got a really good that's balance. Good to balance. It. Yeah. So that's okay. Good. All right. 
Cheers. To new friends. Yes. Cheers. Cheers, yes, guys. absolutely. Oh, the nose. Coffee hits me yep. right away. I mean, right on the nose, you can smell you it. You can it's smell right the coffee there. there. It's like, yep. Just I remember. You got like a malt, you know, nice maltiness there, like sweetness, without being like so sweet or so crazy. Coffee's there. It's just this is. It, it's got a good mouthfeel. It's it does. Full. Yeah, it's. Yeah, you're right. It's got that that mildly chewy Chewy-ness aspect to it for the body. It's like, do you know? Here's here's the thing. Dun, dun, dun. I think this is me. I think if you're more of an IPA fan, mm-hmm. you will put this as a number one. The and I think it's that coffee note I'm finding it on because of the bitterness. It, it, it's got a little bit. It, it of, still gives you a bitterness. To it's it. got a little bit of that bitter back mm-hmm. end. It doesn't have. It doesn't have that smooth drop off. Mm-hmm. That that now I'm now now I'm now I'm not trying to compete here. I'm not trying yeah, to put them up against yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah. <laughs> so now I feel bad that I even mentioned it. No, it's fine. But I <laughs> but no. But the secret is everyone has to like some beauty is in the eye of the beer holder. That's right? right. Exactly. That's right. The right? thing is, I if like you it. are an IPA fan, you're gonna find this to be an incredible no, round. This yeah. is super awesome. But if you're not an IPA fan. It, it, it's it's marginal on what you'll think of it because it's got a, it's got some of the lighter characteristics of what an IPA would have in it. You've got a little bit of that, just a little bit of that bitterness. The thing is that bitter is really associated with the coffee. The coffee, it's coffee bitter, so not it's like, like coffee, coffee bitter. bitter. Exactly, it's not like this acidic bitter. It's the yep. coffee bitter. Yeah. Right. So it's not a bad bitter. It's just. Like I said as a brown. Even, so as your counter's just taken away. <laughs> you know, so I've I've had this before. Before I started, we started doing the podcast. Before I even like, even would think about even think twice about picking up an IP. I've had this brown before. It was easily in my top five browns. Like I've had probably ever. We we up until recently we offered it in nitro in in this state. I would, which be, you would probably like a little bit. More. I was gonna say I'd be interested in the nitro version of this because I think the nitro version would change. It would change a fair bit. It oh, would yeah. change the palette, um, especially in the coffee attribute of this. For you folks who don't realize there's a big difference between a beer that's been nitro, nitro versus you know, car- carbon dioxide. There is actually a huge difference in the two creatures, and sometimes. Nitro is what is your friend. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, hundred percent. Now, don't get me wrong. I've had not, not that every time nitro, and you're like, why? Oh, no, you're really you doing? Yeah. No, 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 no. Put the CO two back, please. Yeah, Put that back. Right, and you're like, no, that was a big miss. It makes a huge difference. Those little bubbles and a little bigger bubbles. They're two different creatures. Um, yeah, you know what? I bet this would be a great beer, Nitro. As I as I sit here and I drink it, yeah, I bet Nitro. This would be awesome. I love. It changes the mouthfeel. It changes the flavor a bit. Too, I because... love the mouthfeel of this beer. And there's one thing also I love about this beer because I love coffee. I love the fact that you have this residual coffee note yeah, just, with just you, yeah. lingering around. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just it's hanging like, out almost like espresso or something. Yeah, exactly. It's. it's it, it, I do. I do dig that. I I would put this. I put this to number number two on my list. I was say, I knew it'd be at least in your top five for this sure. Is, oh, this is number two. I will this, never. This, ever, this, this has always been in my top five. I will never. The only way this would make three is when I make caribou slobber at the house. Otherwise, it's number two. <laughs> <laughs> this is number two. I love this beer. This is really this good. Is good. And I like coffee, so this definitely fits my wheelhouse. Yeah. I like it. This is a good beer. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, sir. Thank Actually, you. that was very enlightening. That's yeah. very good. Yeah. Uh, but I do have a question for you, though. So yeah. uh, we usually ask a lot of our, our, our people, our guests, uh, what what is a, a what is a uh, a big beer? Like, what is your beer dream? It could be with like with where you're at, with where you're traveling. It could be anything beer related. What is your like your pinnacle, like a beer related experience or dream? 
You related dream. Yeah. We've had everything from A to Z on this spectrum. Oh my god! Too, so I am so I so I thought of that question out of the clear blue in our very first episode, and I yeah, asked it, did. and I was like, "Oh my god!" The answer was just like, "Wow!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, it was super cool. Yeah. And everyone's answer has been very cool. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's different every time too. That's really yeah, to it's, it's very cool. That's why ask, we love the question. Ask professionals. Because they have a different different mindset with it too, which is pretty cool. Huh. Okay. I wish I had some Jeopardy music to play right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, beer dream, beer dream, and just for beer as a whole, yeah. Yeah, beer as yeah, a whole. Yeah, just with whatever's like a, a beer related thing. Yeah. Like so with you, the brewery, the travel, you can do anything you want. Beer related, what would it be? A travel? It could be. It could be. Oh, it could really be. Job oh, related. Yes. Could be yes. Non job person. related. Okay. Oh, yeah, non job related. Right, so, okay. Anything but beer Anything related. Beer. What's the big beer dream? Okay. Well, <clears throat> I think I got it. All right. You and, need a doctor. In, in, in August of 2020, I had a trip scheduled for Germany and Belgium okay. that I could not go on. Sure. It was canceled and still haven't made that trip. Oh. So. That oh. I guess that's still on. Uh, on is is uh, it on for the, anything specific, or is it we're just going to just go and just well, travel a bit? I or? think I was explaining. Well, so we have right now we have some family out in Germany, and okay. it was kind of like made good sen- sense to go visit them. But after you know, kind of doing a lot of research, it was like, man, man, a lot of places here I want to go. There were so <laughs> many places on my list yep. of like. In Germany, especially, you know, and I was telling you guys before when we first started this, like I love the old world kind of beers. Sure. Um, you yeah, know, Bein Stefaner, I like. I love a lot of their beers. You can just take, like, when we were talking about how, you know, this is so hard to do because you can't taste, you know, you can't hide anything. So like beers like that, you can't taste any impurities. You know, the Germans do it really well. You know, then you go to Belgian beer, and, you know, like, it's, you a got, it's a whole animal. other animal. Oh, another animal. Yeah. Well, so, are but they not so, the best? But yeah. So I would say, you know, missing out on that trip, like I just, you, you and, and I really want to do it. I really want to, really I really, yeah, it. I really want to do it. And it, because I did so much research on it, you sure. know, I mean, there was like all of these, I think the town is called like uh, Bamberg okay. in Germany. It's got more breweries than any other town in, in the world. Nice. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 go uh, and uh, and we're going to write like, that um, one down. In our logbook of where to go, we go to Germany in a couple of years. Yeah. Got it. And I'm trying to think of the name of the brewery now. I can't think of it at the moment, but there's a brewery out there. We can get their stuff here. You guys might know them, but they smoke all of their beers. Every single beer that they make, every style that they make. Huh. If I think of it, I'll That's tell fine. you guys. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll let you guys know. But anyway. And if you know them, if you know what the brewery is talking about, put in the comments. Yeah, comment, yeah, yeah. Comment. Yeah. Yeah. Write it. Keyboard. Yeah. Letters. Right. So, so yeah, I had a whole trail just, just worked right. out, you know, like train rides, you know, going up to um, Amsterdam, you know, the whole deal. So sure. I think that was, uh, it, it was all beer centric. That whole thing. So that's that was, fantastic. So, kind of, so let me ask you this, because you said that, are you the same person that if you are going someplace new, the first thing you do is you look it up in Google and you go, nearest brewery and you try to find the brewery within like your space uh, i think it's i do it all the time i think it's definitely part of it yeah i mean i think i just mm, kind of broaden it a little bit because i really love food and i like to like we have to eat between beers yeah yeah you know well you gotta think about it a lot of people a lot of of different cultures like they they're differentiated like all right you get to experience a lot of it like by their food by their drink like so makes a lot of sense you can kind of like make yeah. your whole trip around that yeah um you said you were going down to did you say you were going no it was sorry it was no, it's it was all good yeah no. <laughs> yeah he's <laughs> not this mic the other mic yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. a mic going somewhere uh yeah it was before you got here so i'm running late and caught yeah. traffic i know yeah traffic we, we we actually think traffic is a hobby up here and right? we're all caught in it we can't get out of yeah, it yeah i know oh my god yeah. Anyway, it's almost an application. It's ridiculous up here, right? <laughs> well, you know what? We've had. Yeah, we have taken a lot I, of your I'm time. Like, I'm, oh, no, you're fine. Yeah, I'm hoping that. that this grows, and it's not. So no. I'm gonna have to say. Well, let's. I was like, hold on a minute. Oh, you 
ruined he got it. <laughs> I've got some. I'm a ruiner. I do too. I've been holding on to it. Oh, well, I have days. that much oh, left. All right. you can see it. <laughs> um, so before we finish up, ladies and gentlemen, taking up your time, I mean, definitely appreciate it. Um, but is there anything you would want to say to the people, to somebody who doesn't know a lick about craft beer, or they're new, they want to try something different, they're using right. this. Somebody walked in here, they, they get a little bit overwhelmed. Like, what is the one thing you'd want to tell somebody new to, to craft beer? That's a good question. Uh, as well, um, we tried. I would say aim to confuse people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially after Don't drinking a lot. Yeah, yeah. After <laughs> yeah, of course. Beer. Um, I would say uh, keep an open mind. Um, and... You know, we were we touched on it before. Was you know, just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's not good. Uh, somebody else loves it. Uh, kind of keep that mindset, and, kinda, and that and that that kind of pushes you through life as well with everything. Sure, not just beer. So, uh, I'm sorry, I was looking down for most. No, of that. it's all good. <laughs> Thinking. No, uh, but um, yeah, yeah, I think that's what I would say is. Uh, just keep an open mind. Yeah, yeah, keep keep an open mind, and and then just and, and don't be afraid to like don't be. Um, turned off by you know the first couple of things that you you try and you don't like. Sure. There's definitely something out there for everybody. You know, I really think that those two thoughts you have though, the, the keep the open mind and you know, like don't just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's a bad beer. I think those two things really go together. But as long as you keep an open mind and you're willing to always try things, you will eventually learn a wheelhouse or something. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's an important thing, right? If yeah. you're going to do this kind of thing. Be open minded about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Enjoy and keep this in Enjoy mind. Enjoy the process even of like trying to keep find your mind. real house. So I am I'm, I'm having what's left of my beer mm-hmm. and he's gonna have his and he's gonna have the same thing. Yes. Right? And we're gonna do oh look at this. Oh sharing oh, is sharing is sharing, sharing, sharing. So, <laughs> yeah. so the thing is there is a brewer right now that actually went through the trouble of learning how to make this happen, right? These guys are artisans the same way you will find. No, that's not a that that like, right. Like a, oh, a real piece, yeah. a real piece of art. These are all artisans too, and it's important to understand that they're putting, you know, their heart and soul into trying to make something that people enjoy and love. Yeah. It's not you. You may think of it as a beer, and it's a capitalist world, but they're doing it because they really enjoy doing it. Yeah. Brewing isn't one of those easy things that you go, hey. Gonna go in at eight o'clock, just hang out, brew some beer, and go home before. No, it don't work that way. Nowhere near it, right? Yeah. So keep that in mind, guys. Oh, I have one more thing. Yeah, we um, appreciate you know, this. Which, which was, um, don't give up, uh, because um, you're all. You, if you're normal, then you should be ever changing, right? As a person. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and that goes through all aspects of your life, even down to your taste. So you can't. Go through life and go. You try a sour and go. I don't like sour. Like sour is right. And that's it. You know what I mean? Keep, again, keep an open mind. And if it comes up again, try it again. There you go. If it's a different one, try it. You're gonna find something that you like. Anyway, exactly. And you, and you know what? I want to say, sir. Yeah. yeah. It's it's an yeah. It was. It was. It was. Yes. It was Thank you so it much. Was, that's a fun talk. Yeah. And, and, and on a serious to note, close this out, guys. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. Have a good night. Thank you.